all eyes, it feels like, are on USC now that Andy Enfield's gotten his job, his, his uh, contract done with SMU. Uh, is it Eric Musselman? Is he the odds on favorite? Who's being considered? What's the latest that you can tell us? Yeah, there's like four or five guys in the mix right now. You know, Eric Musselman and Jamie Dixon appear to be the front runners. Remember, Jamie's from uh, the area, L.A. Um, Musselman lived out there for a while. His wife, Danielle Sargent, lived out there for a while. Obviously, things have turned quickly at Arkansas. Uh, but here's something you got to keep an eye on. And here's why I think he could be the front runner and get this job. Uh, Jen Cohen, new AD at USC has employed, well, I don't know if employed is the right word, but she has taken on a guy named Matt Kelly to run the search. And Matt Kelly represents some agents, uh, including like Dustin Kearns, Bobby Hurley, some agents. He also does deals for a lot of the ADs. So he works kind of with the ADs to do contracts and things of that nature. He is the point man. They've, they've employed uh, also a search firm, Dan Parker, but they're doing background checks. Matt Kelly's kind of the point man on this on this deal with Jen Cohen. And uh, Eric Musselman does first. So he's he's pretty much her agent, Jen Cohen's agent, for the most part, from what I've been told. Musselman does not have an agent, okay? Does not have an agent. Is there a scenario where Eric Musselman gets the job and then signs with Matt Kelly? That is a scenario I'm told is in play here. A uh, little bit of a conflict of interest, right? A little bit, I would say, yeah. going on here. But whatever the case, Eric Musselman has risen to the top of the U. Now, he might have been there anyway, but I think this certainly gives him even more of an advantage. Um, you know, again, Dixon, Mark Pope, you know, I've been told Randy Bennett might be in the mix a little bit. Buzz Williams was a little bit. Uh, in the mix as well. But, um, you know, Dixon, Pope, Musselman, probably at the top of the list right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes that route and Eric Musselman is the guy at the end of the day. Okay, T.O., so let's just sort of play this out. If it ends up being Eric, what do you make of that fit for him? Well, So let's just take the USC piece of it first, if that's the way it goes. What do you make of the fit for, for Mus there at USC? I, I think Mus is going to have no problem uh, doing what he's been doing and that's hitting the transfer portal. You, there's a lot to sell in Los Angeles, uh, as far as that's concerned with guys who are looking for a, another situation, uh, to me, what he's able to do, uh, I guess going into big 10 play, that's another curveball to this whole thing is, um, I think it's really interesting. I think that's probably the best fit. Uh, I think his attitude is pretty Hollywood. I think his lifestyle is pretty Hollywood and I think it would all work out, um, well for everybody uh, in that one my, my biggest curiosity there would be like what happens to arkansas because then it gets absolutely. really interesting absolutely because I, I, I was really i agree totally where where let me throw out some names for you right? let me let me throw out some names for you because it's probably the second best job in the sec i mean basketball job i would agree crazy fan base good facilities good resources pretty good nil you got to be right for that place though right and and it flipped quickly Absolutely. almost. Like, I'm not sure I've seen this happen too often, where in a year you go from a guy that is absolutely celebrated to now you're, you're completely maligned. Um, I think names that you'll see are, are Chris Beard at Ole Miss. I think Will Wade's name is going to come up at McNeese State. I wouldn't be surprised, like Jerome Tang, somebody like that at Kansas State. I think those are the names you're going to be looking at and more and more because, like you said, this is a very, very attractive job. My question to you, can I can I go back to the Muss and USC deal? Yeah. So Muss and Mick Cronin across town. Think about oh. that. First of all, who's got the height advantage? Who's got the height advantage between those two? <laughs> and what does it look like? Like, is there enough testosterone to handle Muss and Mick Cronin in L.A.? Uh, there's there's enough room in LA for that much testosterone and there's a lot of testosterone in LA so I think there's plenty or or probably th there's who's got the height advantage Theo who's got the height advantage that I don't those know two, I've never seen them side by side those two or Jeff Borzello rank them in terms of height oh hair yeah the, the hair, the hair gives it to would, 
Yeah. Yeah. Borzello, the hair kind of puts him over the top there. Yeah. I would yeah. agree. He's, he, no, he towers I, over the two of them because of the hair. <laughs> I, yeah. I guess, I guess. I have uh, no idea there. Yeah, that's the that's the piece of it that I was sort of fascinated by. Jeff is like Arkansas, but if I mean yeah. they would, I, if if they land one of Chris Beard or um, or who was the other? Who was the other? Who was the second name? Will Wade, Jerome Tang, right. yeah, guys like yeah. If they land, if, it feels like if they land one of Will Wade or, or Chris Beard, they're gonna feel really good still, even yes. though Musley. But I would say. Must did a damn good job at Arkansas. I don't know what went wrong this year. Obviously, there's a couple of situations around college basketball where it's very tough to explain why there was a fall off the way there was. But there, it, there is a little bit, and it's a good job, but there is a little bit of a be careful what you wish for to me because Must did a damn fine job at Arkansas. It has done. 100%. Yeah, and I, I think it's – a little bit now of Arkansas fans flipping on him because they feel like he he doesn't want to be there anymore. They're getting the feeling that like, okay, you don't want to be here, screw you. Right. We don't want right. you here. In fam- You're not one of us. And and that's the way it goes with all these fan bases, right? Like yeah. Yeah. players leaving, you know, like you leave, you're not one of us anymore. At those real, the, the, the Arkansas, the Texas Techs, the Illinois, especially like programs like that. It's like, screw you. You leave us, we hate you now. We hate you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's a tough it, one. I, I think with the with the way he's been going about it, you're going to have feast or famine a lot. Like those things are going to – you're going to bring in 12 guys. Sometimes they're going to mesh perfectly, and you're going to end up in the second – deep in the second weekend. And then sometimes you're going to have years like you did this year where you're just below 500, and it's a bit of a headache. So, like, it, it's uh, – it's a mixed bag, but I do think the way he recruits, the way he sells his one-year plan to a lot of these guys, and let's be honest, guys, like the guys that go to Muscleman, they're hoping for a really good year so they can go on. And he's able to sell that, and you're going to be able to hit the lottery a couple of years at a time. Now it's just a matter of are you going to be able to string together three out of four years? I think that's that would be the goal with that. And then every you, you get a fourth year that you're kind of forgiven. But I think – um He's done a really nice job there. So I, I don't want people to all of a sudden forget about it. But, you know, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't know that he was under so much pressure there at Arkansas after what, two straight elite eights. Right. <laughs> like right. you're going to have a bad year every now and then. It's like, yeah, you are. It's crazy. And, I, and, and you should have like we got We got to build like we got to have like equity thresholds. Like if you get to X spot in the tournament, like you get a pass for two years or like if you get two straight elite depending eights, like I, school, you shouldn't it could even be just the tournament. Right. Depending on the school, it right. could be just the tournament. So it's like, what, what's Absolutely. your standard? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Hey, uh, Andy infield at SMU, Jeff, uh, they're going to the ACC. Um, clearly they feel like this is a, you know, a swing of a hire. Uh, what do you make of, how competitive he'll be able to like do they have the resources there like are they ready for this like what do you make of SMU basketball yeah they paid him a lot of money they got money we know at SMU you know they were fairly successful with Larry Brown before the bottom fell out because Larry was doing Larry things uh and eventually got fired um Enfield's done a good job at USC. I mean, think of it. He hired a good staff when, when he took the job, and he was completely outside the box. He's gone through several ADs there. Um, you know, he made the best hire of probably anybody the last four or five years when he hired uh, Eric Mobley, right? Um, you know, he brought a lottery pick, a high lottery pick, and another really, really good player that helped him go to an Elite Eight in 2021. And you know, went to the tournament the last couple of years, and then this year was a it was a complete shit show. Um, you know, and not because of Bronny. I, I think it was just kind of everything, right? Isaiah Collier, he wasn't as good as people thought. He got hurt. Bronny obviously had some issues and wasn't as good as people thought. Big Vince hasn't been what he thought he'd be. Like there's just a lot of a lot of issues this year. But I like the hire, you know. I, I think they were they were trying to swing for the fences. I'm not sure they they hit a home run, but I think they they hit a good double. And Andy Enfield's done a nice job at USC for the for the the totality of his his career there. 